In this tutorial, we're going to look at back-to-back -back cavities, and this is a can be a quite a difficult matricing situation where you've got two cavities facing each other. So just before we isolate um, with the with the rubber dam, we're just going to check that we're going to be able to put a wedge in where we need here, and we're going to also have a look at which of the cavities is higher um, or relative to the gingival tissue. So here you can see that the, the premolar cavity is is much higher from the gingiva than the the molar. And that's worth knowing, it's worth checking if you get a wedge under them, um, because you could do a partial patholectomy at this point. So if we've decided we don't need to do that, um, we can get on and do our rubber dam isolation. At this point, it might be worth just looking at why these cavities are difficult to matrix. So I've just placed a classic Torvian sexual matrix, and then I've placed a, a wedge. And you can see that even with this scenario, the band's very unstable and it is encroaching, it is going in to the um, restorative space of the cavity next door. And watch what happens when I place a ring on here. Um, if, if you ever happen to do this, just sort of following blindly the sexual matrix kits, it's gonna massively uh, encroach into the space on the premolar, okay? And that therefore, you're not sharing the space out properly and that that one's going to be almost concave in shape by the time you finish it and a very poor contact point. One of the things I've tried in the past is adding some um, PTFE tape into the, uh, the adjacent cavity to try and share the space better. But whenever you're working with matrix bands, you want to try and avoid this kind of packing up against them like this um, because it tends to create distortion and it's very difficult to share the space as evenly um, as you might like. Doing it this way and then securing with some liquid dam generally makes a band that's stable enough to pack in and that is an option um, for doing these back-to-back -back cavities. But a much better way generally is to use two matrix bands at the same time to share the space in a much more controlled way. Now the key here is to look at the bridging space, so that's the gap between the two cavities and pick your matrix bands accordingly. You really want the matrix bands to touch and share the space well. So here I've used a double curved Torvian band on the molar and a classic Torvian band on the premolar. When I used two double curved bands, it was too much and you were getting some deformation. But this combination, I tried a few, was just the best. And we've got a really nice profile that I want to maintain when we restore these teeth. It's really important that these matrix bands actually touch the way you want at this point. And if they don't, we need to get more curved bands or change the profile of them. So once they're in place, you can place a wedge um, as long as it doesn't create distortion of those bands. But you don't absolutely have to, as I'll show you in a minute. But you can certainly place a wedge here if it works well and secure, which I'll show you in a moment. And these bands might not be stable next to each other. They must be able to be packed against them. And the classic way that you stabilise uh, sectional bands is by placing a ring. Um, but we really don't want to place a ring in these back-to-back -back situations. Why? Because when we place one, there's just they're not secure enough against each other. And so what will invariably happen is the bands will flatten and deform and you will lose the lovely curved contact point you are aiming for. So I would avoid rings in the first step of back-to-backs. Sometimes it's tempting to use them to try and tip the bands to um, to get over the bridging space but you're much better using the variety of bigger curved bands um, we now have available. And the other reason we don't need to use a separating ring is we're just going to fill one of these, cav these cavities one at a time. So we don't actually need the separation that the ring is provided. And in fact, we don't really need the separation of the wedge either. So as long as we felt we could get enough cervical seal, we could restore these without a wedge. And sometimes that's, that's helpful when the cavity is quite deep and near the papilla, and um, you can't really easily place a wedge without creating distortion. And also, because you're doing them one at a time, you've got a chance to finish that cavity um, very easily. Okay, but to control cervical extrusion and also to secure the bands enough to be able to pack against, we do need to secure them. So here I'm going to place some liquid on, um, and then I will cure that. And I could do that over the wedge, which I probably would do most of the time, but occasionally we could do it without the wedge in as well. So now let's um, restore and choosing which one to do. Here I'm going to pick the premolar. Um, I just pick the one that I find more difficult. And the premolar I find more difficult here because it's a claustrophobic or small cavity, um, which I, I, I'll 
quicker or something you find more difficult to finish and you're more likely to get extrusion and the opportunity to finish is always better on the first cavity you fill. Now we can take apart that matrix assembly and we've got probably you know, uniquely good access to that um, restoration to be able to finish it, remove any excess and cure through glycerin to get rid of the oxygen inhibitor there. Well now we're back to familiar ground so we just got a classic class two so let's just go through the steps. We're going to find a wedge that um, fits appropriately and doesn't cause matrix distortion. So I know I'm a little bit biased but we're going to use a um, Torvian double curve band that we helped develop and I just don't think you can beat this band for the contact profile that you develop um, as long as you've got a good enough bridging gap it's my good mix to go to now and then we can um, get that wedged in place. So if we want additional separation, we want to place a ring. Here I'm using uh, the Mycerium Nitai ring that we retail, which is a really good ring. And you can see that's worked really well if you haven't got a lot of distortion going on, and it will certainly give us a lot more separation. And if I feel confident the wedge is giving enough separation, I'll just secure it with some liquid down. And here it's important that you've done that, remove the oxygen inhibit layer, or wrap the adjacent tooth with PTFE, otherwise it'll be difficult to remove the liquid on. But that creates a really secure matricing platform um, and then you can very easily just finish your cavity and restoration. So we'll build the proximal wall um, then we'll try and get that really carefully to the right height and then we'll finish the rest of the, the restoration and try and put a little bit of anatomy in if we can. And that's uh, pretty much the class two finished. And we can even take the tooth out with a tie on and check we've got that beautiful contact profile. So thanks for watching and please share if you found it useful and thanks for supporting the business and let us know what the videos we can do.